I was like 189 pounds at the time. Well, so we were just kind of sitting there, and then we're like, you know, we should, we should compete, you know? And uh, he needed to dry out. I could use drying out a little bit every once in a while. Sure. And uh, so we're like, yeah, okay, let's just make a pack. You and I are going to sign up for Masters Worlds this year. And on, on my, uh, May 1st, we're going to start dieting, eating right, um, not drinking training, all this kind of stuff. I made a lifestyle change at that point. So let's go back to dinner tonight and peer pressure all the black belts who never compete. And, uh, and it did, man, because we had... Uh, Amanda, Leah, Rory, John Murphy, Frankel, Ricky, me, Diggins. Those are just black belts that I just mentioned. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, we had 27 competitors. And, uh, yeah, we just threw the gauntlet down. Going into this, did you have some, I want to know, can I compete at this level? Is that what this was about? Uh, other uh, than, you know, it was about a lot of things. Okay. It was about a lot of things. Uh, you know, the, fir the first and foremost, it was, I'm sick of my current lifestyle. Okay. I, don't, I don't want this lifestyle. I'm getting older. Um, I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to be overweight. I don't want to be unhealthy. Uh, men who carry weight in their mid midsection is directly correlated to a lot of health problems. Yeah, I being one. yeah, I felt myself getting a little bit of a gut and I'm like, you know what? This, this isn't right, um, and um, I needed something to change that. And so, having this competition caused me to change my sleep pattern, caused me to change my workout, caused me to change how I ate and what I ate, when I ate, because now I intermittent fast every day. You know, um, does that bring you that edge? Like, again, it's just you know, um, uh, Jocko. Um, I love his podcast and it, it, that book, uh, Ex Extreme Ownership, yeah. one of my favorite books. That. And one of the things he says, and I didn't understand what he meant, um, was uh, discipline equals freedom. And I was like, How, that doesn't, that seems counterintuitive. Like that doesn't really make <laughs> sense. But he talks about like, oh, you want to you wanna do more pull-ups? Do more pull-ups. Uh, get out of bed, like get up, like, you know. And, but, but so the thing about the, the, the um, discipline is it puts you in control. So it tr really, truly is more freedom because if you don't have discipline, what do you have? Now you're, the, not having discipline means you're at the whim of everything else, which what isn't, is that's not freedom. That's not for you because now you're a victim of your senses, you're a victim of your desires, you're a victim of your whatever. What life hands you. Exactly. And with discipline, intermittent fasting, not drinking during the week, uh, getting seven to eight hours of sleep a night, making sure that when the alarm goes off, you hop out of bed, planking every morning that when you get out of bed. Uh, I'm in the sauna at least five days a week for 45 <laughs> minutes. What, what about the sauna? Why, why is that such a... Well, two things, again, it, all of it goes, ultimately goes back to discipline. So I hit the sauna every single morning for 45 minutes, Monday through Friday. Um, one, it is a great time. I think it was maybe Warren Buffett. I don't know. Somebody who has a lot more money than me and is a lot smarter than me talks about that you need a chunk of time every day where you just sit and think. You do nothing but sit and think. And, and so that sauna time is that time for me. So what I do is I, I get in there and by myself, I have a sauna in my house and I sit in there and I just think for 45 minutes before my day ever really gets going. I just think about everything and anything that enters my mind. So you're just being kind of present of what's going on in your world. Exactly. And just drowning it out with busy busyness and, other and then there's of course then there's the whole health benefit side of it which you know the the, the jury is still somewhat out but there is some indication that there's things called uh, heat shock proteins that are activated 
under those uh, extreme stress conditions like that that the sauna creates. There's also some evidence that um, because I do sauna after I power lift, there is some evidence that if you sauna after your workout that it increases your cardio because it increases your heart rate. So anything that increases your heart rate is going to increase your, your cardio and your, your health. Um, there, there's also some links um, with dementia and Alzheimer's and things really? like that. Yeah, and that's, there, 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 there is actual scientific medical evidence for that. So there's that piece of it, but let's be honest, like to me, that's just a, a bonus. I'm going to be in that sauna regardless because I want to prove to myself that I can sit in there and I can take the heat for 45 minutes and I can prepare for, 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 for the rest of my day. Yeah, well, I mean, that just sounds like solid, um, a solid approach, but let's be honest, not the freaking heat. <laughs> you know, most people can't stand stillness. Right. You know, or even their own thoughts for 45 minutes. So that is wow. Um, you know, I do, uh, one of my clients is uh, Flow Don. Mm -hmm. um, I think they sponsor uh, Diggs. I, we've got one too, I, uh, Cloud Nine in yeah. Kalispell, and, and Franklin and I did cryotherapy yeah. before the tournament. We yeah, float, yeah. the float, we did that, I did a couple, the first, the first, one, yeah, the, fir the first one causes some panic, a little bit of anxiety, I didn't know what to expect, like I went in there, and I'm somewhat claustrophobic, and uh, I, uh, I was nervous, you know, there was some, I had some weird thoughts racing through my head. And it was hard to relax the first time. I, it was hard to, you know, there was tension in my neck. Yeah. Well, even just to lay back and trust that you're not going to go under. But the second time I noticed a huge improvement over the first time, I was able to get into the zone much quicker the second time. And, yeah, and then, and then I was able to actually relax and, and uh, you know, I benefit from that the same way I benefit from the sauna. It's just, a, it's just, it's, it's just, a, it's forced, it's forced Intentional. mindfulness. Intentional. Yeah. So, I like that. yeah. I like that. That's, that's all good stuff. Um, yeah. The, uh, one of the co-founders of Flow Down here in Portland, he uh, designed a vertical flow tank. Yeah, you put like weights, you know, on, uh -huh. on your feet and you go in like that. It's supposed to be amazing for anyone with back problems. Yeah, everything up, so that's, that's cool. cool. It takes something like competition mm -hmm. to cause you to, 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 to get into motion okay. because it's, it's like, okay, you tell your whole team, right, that you're going to compete and then you ridicule the ones that aren't going to compete, right? right? And then you got 26 other people who have now also committed to compete with you. I ended up losing... 23 pounds in a short period of time. What did you uh, compete at? 168. Uh, plus, I just got a really good schedule together. And it wasn't a diet. Now it's just a lifestyle change. Like, I'm still, I was 169 pounds last night. Wow. You know, so I kept it off. Mom sent me a text last night. And uh, she said, uh, I've lost 11 pounds wow. in four months. Thank you for being an example wow, for me. It's a and, lot harder for women. Oh, yeah. Especially mom. In their 60s, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's why I like public proclamation yeah. because it holds me accountable. I mean, it, it, it really does. And Accountability is, is key, right? Yeah. Yep. And so that's, that's what happened. And then, nice. um, you know, I wasn't as strict as Franklin. I was honest with him. I told him, too, because <laughs> I'm like, he, he gave up alcohol 100%. Wow. I just stopped drinking during the week. To be honest with you, like I still, That's still pretty I still let my hair down on the weekends, right um, and uh, and I'm still doing that now though. Right so I think that's a I think that's a good, um, I think that's a good system, is if I don't drink five days a week and then and then I give myself a little space two days a week. That's a that that see that's that's finding a a lifestyle, not a diet or being like super like vegan or a monk or right. some straight edge or whatever it's bringing that balance what works for you right right, right. yeah and only you know that i think well, and then I, I i changed my sleeping patterns um, See, sleep hygiene is especially for someone who's trying to get everything done right mm -hmm. you're like I, I have to get all this done. how do you make sure you have good sleep hygiene man well so for me what it was is i just said okay look my goal and see i, I give myself room and then that way it's, it's not, you don't get into those deep funks and depressions because you don't fail all the time. When you set yourself up to fail, yeah. 
then that just the failure in of itself can, can lead to a downward spiral. So what I do is I go, okay, my goal is to get in bed by 10 p.m. Okay, nothing good happens late at night, by the way, if you think about it, nothing, no, nothing productive. No. You know, and a lot of bad shit happens after midnight. Like if you're doing stuff after midnight, it typically isn't good. I was a fool for right. Many years. So my goal is to be in bed by 10, but I'm happy if I'm in bed between 10, 30 and 11. I shoot for 10. I need to be asleep by 11. I get up at 6 a.m. every single day. My alarm is set for 6 a.m. I get up at 6 a.m. The first thing I do, is I roll out of bed and I plank for five minutes straight. No, you do not. Yes, I do. You do core right after. Yep. What does that do for you? Dis it's discipline. I know it's going to be the hardest thing that I have to face that day. Okay. So I get up, I get right out of bed, I get right on the floor. I put my, get my stopwatch out. In fact, you'll look, I bet it's, watch, I bet that it's even set for that right now. Let's see. Uh, timer. What's it set for? Boom. Five minutes. You see that? Yeah, five minute plank. So three times. So 15 minutes. So what I do is I get down there and the first one's relatively easy. And I add 15 seconds a week to my total. I started at a minute, a, a minute, three times. And then the next week, 15 seconds. And the next week, 15 seconds. Next week, 15 seconds. I started this when I started training for Masters Worlds. That's cool. I'm up to five minutes now. That's crazy. The first one's not bad. I put Pandora on. Okay. I set the timer, put it underneath yeah. me, and I just veg out. Like I just, it's kind of like a, a, a form of meditation. Yes. Then I'm done. I get up, walk downstairs, give myself a little break, pour myself a, a cup of black coffee. I come back upstairs, get down on the floor again. The second set of five minutes is difficult. My body starts to really quake at about the three minute mark. But I just keep telling myself, you can do it. And what, what, why it is so rewarding is there's nobody there to hold you accountable. So you could cheat if you want. Like if you could tell yourself, you know what, I'm just, you know what, I'm gonna just stop now. I can't go anymore. Yeah, I think that's even worse now. Right. There's, there's bigger consequences yeah. to that. So, and then the third one, I'll be honest, the third one, I haven't made it through at the five minute mark yet. Okay. So I, I, I can get, was, I, I, I can, I, uh, usually I end up somewhere around the three or four minute mark on the third set. That's, but that's a lot, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's a lot of planks. But so th uh, that's how my day starts every day. And then Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This is seven days a week. Yeah, uh, no, I give myself the weekends. Okay. Again, I give myself the weekends. Like, I need something somewhere to look forward to. Going crazy. Yeah, and, um, and then on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I hired a personal trainer okay. because I needed a coach. Sure. And uh, so uh, my kids, my wife, and my coaches, I pay for all of them. And we go to Beast Athletes. And um, on Monday, um, we deadlift. On Wednesday, we bench press, and on Friday, we do back squats. I started doing that, and uh, that's been fantastic just for the family, just for the, the, the team, and having somebody holding you accountable, like to good form, not letting you overdo. I was going to ask you that. As a, you're, you know, that's what you do for a living. You're everyone else's coach. Right. So what have you learned from that, co from that coach? On, on, no. Honestly, what I, what I learned is that one of the most important things that a coach can do is keep their athletes from doing too much. Because left to our own devices, myself in particular, the, 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 my personality is I'll just keep throwing weight on the bar. I'll just keep throwing weight on the bar. Um, I'll let my form go out the window just to prove that I can get the weight up. Um, and so, uh, that's the biggest thing, you know, he'll say racket. Like if he sees a bad set, like as soon as he sees, he's like racket, you know, put, put it up, you know, and then take some weight off or that's all you're going to do for today. All right. Well, clearly. So wait, when did you start the personal trainer? As soon as you decided that you were going to do the. Right about that time. Okay. Right about that time. Yeah. And you're right. still with them. Still with them. Yeah. I mean. Three days a week, we don't miss. Uh, get there at 7 a.m., work out until about 8.15. The kids change in the car and get dropped off at high school. And, um, well, we're going to talk about your kids in a minute. <laughs> I want to stick with you. Um, let's get to the fights now. Okay, cool. Uh, you were clearly 
you know, this little kind of prelude leading up to the fights um, was good for me anyway, just because watching, I don't know which ma uh, match it was, but you just were on fire, like scary, you know, <laughs> in a beautiful way, you know. So um, the first uh, match is going to be with um, Alex. Yeah, Alex yeah. D'Souza. Okay. Funny story, the backstory on that one is, um, you know, I'm, I'm in the bullpen and a guy comes up to me and he's like, hey, are you Travis? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I'm um, Alex, and shook my hand. He's like, I'm your. Uh, we're facing each other first. So I always think is a dick move. Like to me, that's to mess with you, yeah. Right? I mean, that's a dick move. Like, uh, but it also told me that that um, he was concerned or taking it seriously because why did he go to the trouble to? You know, he he wouldn't looked at the brackets and then, um, you know, he obviously saw who his first opponent was, Googled me. You know, knew a bunch of stuff about me, knew where I was from. You know, you try to find out stuff. I don't, I didn't even know who I was facing first. Like, I didn't know, I didn't even know what the guy's name was that I was facing first. Because I don't care. I don't care who's across the mat. It's like, who, I'm going to run whoever they put in front of me over. Like, it's not about, it's never about them. It's about me. Like, what did I do to, what did I do to prepare? Uh, you know, and, and so... But then the funny story there was is uh, John Cavanaugh shows up to corner me, which was awesome because it was the it was the 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 weigh-ins for Mayweather Connor that day, and he took time out of his schedule to come coach me at this thing, and uh, he walks up to me and I you know uh, I told him who my first opponent was. He's like I trained with that guy before I ever trained with SBG. It was the first Brazilian black belt in Europe. This guy. Really, Alex. Yeah, Alex. Yep. He's got his own academy, so yeah, uh, here he is here, I guess. So I had a sequence I had been working on, um, and you see it here, uh, which was I was going to go out, and I'm going to fake guard pull to ankle pick. So this is all I trained. I, um, when I get ready for a competition, um, I really simplify my jiu-jitsu. See, I get, the, I get it there, but I, I forgot about the intensity of competition, and you... Um, you just can't accept anything, and so Alex did a really good job there of not accepting that takedown. Like he was, and and I did a poor job of making him accept it. So my job there was to make him accept it, um, and I didn't do that. So now we went Why, because you were shocked by his response. Uh, I just, you know, I, I didn't. I this is the first match. I didn't have that killer instinct going yet. So I, I, I'm still looking for that same technique there. Um, uh, I don't go away from it until right here I hit him with that uh, foot sweep. Okay, so I work a lot of judo. So that's probably my second favorite takedown uh, is that, that foot sweep. He was going to try for that funky uh, baseball bat choke there from the bottom. Uh, so I saw that. Um, not sure why I didn't get any passing points. That It just depends. Sometimes the, the uh, referees will consider that guard and sometimes they, they won't consider guard so i'm up by two here which is you know a pretty narrow margin um and but how are you feeling right now are you i'm feeling, feeling I'm, this? Uh, right now yeah i feel great i'm like oh i got this I'm, I'm once i scored and got on top um because that's what i trained i figured the match was over in my mind but then right here i almost lose this match and i, I got really upset with myself like i went back to the bullpen and i was really just i i I remember John and Matt um, trying to, to, to tell me to chill out um, because I, I, I won, you know, they were like, don't worry about it. Because right here, he kind of gets in my head a little bit. So he, he starts talking to the referee in Portuguese, which is always disconcerting, right? Because if I talk to the referee, I'm going to get DQ'd. And this guy's having like a 15-minute conversation, it seems like. with Right. And finally, I mean, the referees, you see him talking back to him. I mean, this is, not, this is not supposed to happen. Like, if you look at the IBJJF rule book, you are not allowed to talk to the referee um, unless you're Brazilian, I guess, and speak Portuguese. And um, so he kind of gets in my head here a little bit, or what I should say is, is I kind of lose focus. And, and um, I start to rush myself. Um, because he's complaining that I'm stalling. I mean, you see I'm not. And, and this is what's weird here is I get this really good arm trap right there where I, where I switch the leg over. Can't, um, and, and so I'm, I've got my shin on his bicep on the other side, and I'm attacking that. Um, yeah, and I was, I was looking for that paper cutter choke. And at that point the, is when the referee decides to give me a penalty for stalling. And it's just like, what, what do I need to do? I mean, I'm obviously moving. So then you see me, I look for that mounted triangle there. That was a, that was a bad decision. 
that almost cost me the match. Um, you know. Because of this is where you're at right now. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, I I, I gave up the top position. Um, so and then is that just pure emotion right there? That no. What that is, that's lack of focus on my part. Okay. That's 100% my. Everything that happens is my fault. Always in every match. It doesn't matter. Like, short of the referee just flat out cheating you, which which he did. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I was still. I, I didn't. You know, I I could have maintained my focus. And here, typical situation, right? He's trying to gain an advantage with this restart. And of course, I've been doing this long enough now. In the past, I would have allowed that to happen. You see here, I'm like, nope, that's nope, nope, that's nope. He didn't have a cross face, see? So he's trying to cheat here for sure. Um, and uh, so I insist on my grips and my position. And so now I'm stuck in this um, half guard. I went for a little uh, inverted arm bar there, got his attention when he's reaching for the cross face. Um, but honestly, at this point, um, if he passes, he goes up by a point because uh, pass is three, and, and, and I'm only up by two right now, um, and we're tied on penalties because um, he got penalized um, for talking, and then I got penalized for stalling, apparently, which I, I don't think I was. And, um, but I am up two advantages um, in addition to the two points at, at, at this point. What's he trying to do right now? Uh, now he's just trying to pass or flatten me out. If he flattens me out, he's going to get an advantage for it. Um, if he passes, he's going to go up by a point. And I'm just doing everything I can right now to not let him pass and, and, and trying to re-guard. Um, and he's doing a good job here. Um, and he almost passes right here. I do everything in my... Look, at this is, this is just me not accepting. <laughs> the, the referee almost put his hand up. You see that? And then, and, and then this shouldn't have been points because the takedown was out of bounds. And that's why I stopped moving there. Um, normally that would have been a restart, but you know, he let it keep going. So now at this point, to be honest with you, I don't even realize I'm winning right now. Um, I think it's tied. Um, I think it's tied because I know he got the two points for the takedown. I watched him get the two points. Um, I know I've been penalized. Um, I didn't know he had been penalized. I, I actually you know, at this point, I, I, I thought I might have even been losing. And so now it's everything I can do. This is just pure determination. Now you've got that focus back. I, 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 well, I just can't let him pass. Right. And, and I'm, uh, you know, I, the first match is always a tough one for me because I'm kind of burning myself out. And then here I see the score. And so then I realize, okay, I beat him by an advantage. Why I was disappointed with that is um, I should have, it, I should have beat him going away. I mean, it, 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 honestly, it should have been 6-0, 8-0. Uh, I should have finished him. I should have stayed on top. Um, and so that's what I'm thinking right now is, I'm like, you know, I got that one, but, you know, I almost gave it away. Yeah. And, and the first match for me is always um, the, the most critical one because if I can go out there um, and get, get the nerves out and then, and then feel the intensity uh, and understand that that this is this is different than rolling in the gym or even rolling at comp team, then um, I I usually do pretty good and and and, I, and I, I get through that first wall. Everyone has a first wall. What, what you refer to it as is your second wind, and your second wind is always a more sustainable than your first. Because um, you found that beautiful flow and yeah, and and so now I'm 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 feeling good about that that I'm advancing. And you got to remember this, there are 40 guys in that bracket, 20 of them just now lost, right? So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, well, 20 guys came all the way to Las Vegas, spent all this money in this tournament, made weight, and, um, and they're done. Right. So I'm feeling thankful. I mean, anytime I win a match at that level, at the black belt level at, at an IBJJF tournament, I'm like, you know what? That's good. Yeah. That, that's good. Um, so I'm, I went back to the bullpen. Um, I, all, yeah, the cool thing was it wasn't just my coaches. Like it wasn't just Matt. It wasn't just Kavanaugh or, or, or Conley. But um, it's everybody. You know, Frankel, Rory, all the people that are competing too. So we just had this, this huge um, tribe down there. And, and it was just, we were all just kind of feeding off each other at that point. I was going to ask you, what kind of energy and how does that impact your energy? It w that, that, you know, that big of a tribe presence. Yeah, it, it, it was incredible. And um, 
what, what I, I forgot to mention too is as I was walking to my match, I walk past my brother competing. He's already rolling, so I'm kind of trying to coach a little bit okay. while I'm waiting for my match to start. So oh, I watch that match. Man. Yeah. He, that was the only way he was going to lose, and that's what, that's what gets him every time is if he gives up the takedown, it's tough. If he pulls guard, no one's going to pass, and eventually he's going to hit that sweep or at least win by an advantage. But unfortunately, you know, that guy came out and shot that quick. Yeah. But again, that's that. See, that's that not accept mentality, you know. And in the gym, he'll he'll finish those sweeps because the the mentality is different. But when you're out there, the intensity and and um, you know, people are committing a lot. You know, they're giving up time with their families, they're changing their diet. They're training hard. They're They've got students in. watching them. They're spending, you know, a couple hundred dollars to enter the tournament. It costs uh, that much to enter the tournament? Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Depending on when, how long you wait to register. And a lot of the black belts oh. will wait to the last minute. You know, they want to see who's in their division and all that. And, uh, and then, you know, unless you live in Vegas, it's a plane ticket and a hotel. So, I mean, it, they're invested financially. Sure. Um, so. Professionally? Yep. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So, your second match... Second match you're was, on fire, you're walking yeah, this. second match was no problem. Like this I, right yeah, this is the one, uh, I had no idea again. I, I never pay attention to who I'm facing. This is a uh, Keith, nice. Keith, Keith Inouye from Hawaii. Okay. Um, and That's so sweet. same thing. I'm not going to deviate from my strategy. Uh, I'm going to immediately get grips and I'm going to fake a guard pull, uh, which is coming up here real quick. This is all I train. Boom, drop down. Um, and this time I made him accept. Okay. So uh, I'm feeling right right now, I mean, I can see just in my swagger and the way I'm carrying my body language, I get really kind of confident and, and, and uh, just, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but I, but I just feel strong. And, uh, it's infectious just even watching that. Yeah, and so at this point, I'm up to, and I, and I, I knew I was going to make the same mistakes I made in my last match. And then he, he yeah, he makes a mistake there. So... Um, that's something I do in the gym all the time. So none of my guys were surprised at all. I know everyone in the, behind there clapping and stuff and screaming, and hooting and hollering. Afterwards, they told me that they thought this guy was the best guy in the division. Uh, they had watched his previous match. I had no idea who he was. I didn't watch him, but apparently he was pretty good and he dominated his first opponent. Um, but um, was he just in shock? I think he was. Um, that's how, how long was that match? <laughs> that was pretty pretty short. Uh, it was less than a minute probably, huh? Uh, yeah, no, I hit that all the time in the gym. What I do there is uh, when my opponent goes to that De La Hiva mm -hmm. guard position uh, is I'll turn my knee towards the, uh, the, the, the hooking leg okay. to try to break the foot off, which is a common counter that most people do. But what I'm actually doing there is I'm baiting them because... Well, I know what's going to happen is as I clear that hook, they're going to move and adjust and reset the hook. So what I do is I, I turn into it, and then the, as soon as they start to reset the hook, that's when I fall back into the knee bar. So I, I really get them to commit and put that leg too far in. Is there some moment that you can feel like you realize, like, shit? <laughs> oh, yeah, when you're the other guy? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel it in this next match. Oh. Oh yeah, I feel in this next match, it's it's that moment, um, you know, where the guy enters a sweep and you know that there's no coming back, that you're done. Like there's, it's too late, everything's perfect, and and you messed up, okay. and you're not coming back from it. Yet it hasn't. Been, in this one, um, so let's watch it. Yeah, I I, I don't deviate. Uh, same strategy. I'm confident now at this point. This, by the way, was uh, last year's world champion. Uh, and, he, and then he, uh, he made it to the finals and he lost in the finals. But so really good opponent, really, really legit guy. He see, he's not letting what's happening. He's not allowing me to get the collar grip. You see that? Uh -huh. So that's the difference with him. And that's uh -huh. that that's where I felt it. And I was like, damn it. And I almost hit this triangle. Uh -huh. But he, he was he was countering the triangle uh, pretty, pr pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I should have grabbed my shin here. Okay. Uh, and then I should have umaplata missed. Uh -huh. um, He's doing everything right. So, all right. So now, all right. So in hindsight, I, you know, come on, it's hindsight, but you clearly know what you should have done. Why didn't that, you're not an amateur. Why, why did Because he knew what he should have done too. <laughs> and, and, and let's be honest here, because no, nothing's going to be said during this match. Uh -huh. That's not going to be this. This guy was better than me. Um, he was just flat better than me. Okay. Uh, he beat me. 
Um, he was good, uh, experienced, uh, good pressure. Um, I would love to face him again. I'm, I'm hoping to face him maybe at Pan Ams this year in March, uh, maybe next year at Worlds. I mean, I'm not saying he's unbeatable. I'm not saying I can't improve, but um, I'm not going to beat him this day. You know, th th this day he was better than me um, uh, pretty much everywhere. Um, he, yeah, I mean, it looked like I had a lot of opportunities and it felt like I had opportunities, but not as much if you were where I was. Um, I could tell um, the things he was doing. He, he, he understood where he was, where, where he was in danger. And so he was reacting and doing things right. Um, at one point, um, when, when, when he uh, gets to my back, um, I, I, the thought enters my mind to uh, footlock him. And it was the weirdest thing, because as soon as I started to adjust to get myself in a position where I might go for kind of a Hail Mary footlock, he, he opened his ankles. And so he knew, like he, he, was, he, he had a high um, uh, tournament IQ. Yeah. And right here, his, his top pressure was so, it was just smothering. His guard passing pressure was great. And then when he gets on top here, I'm doing everything I can. I mean, I'm going for broke. I'm not going to leave anything on the mat. I, I, I came to win gold. I didn't come to win two matches and then lose my third. And um, so right here, I, I'm doing everything I can. Um, and at one point, I just have to kind of say, you know what? Um, I, I'm not going to escape uh, with, with good fundamentals here. I'm not going to be able to do the correct escape, which would be to bridge and turn into this guy and try to get my guard back. So at one point here, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go for like a running man escape. I'm going to have to show him my back. You're not supposed to do that. But if I just lay here for the next two and a half minutes, I'm going to lose anyways. Yeah. So I'm going to lose anyways. So at this point, um, I decide to just try to make some space by pushing on his face. Um, I look for uh, like a, a, a little um, reverse triangle here and, and, and stuff. And now I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna try to give him my back here a little bit to, to make space. He's prepared for that. You know, he's, 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 he's ready. He gets another two points here for the knee on the belly. So now, at this point, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna, you're gonna lose by an advantage. You're gonna lose by seven points, 100 points. Um, losing's losing, and so here I, I, I decided to take a risk. Almost pays off here. Almost, yeah. You know, I almost scramble out of it. I do recover uh, half guard, I think, at some point here briefly. Uh, never was able to get to a full guard where I, f I feel like I could have maybe attacked. I have a, a, a pretty attacking style, but I, I can't attack from positions like cross sides bottom. Uh, so here I. Uh, uh, kind of the same thing. I've spent a lot of this match now underneath this guy, getting kind of mauled. Yeah. Um, so what has that done to your kind of? Well, see, I, here I'm still fighting. So now, now I'm back to half guard. Mm -hmm. I, I never give up. Okay. Um, I, I've never given up in this match. Um, but I'm also what I'm feeling is, you know, um, this guy came more prepared than I did. Um, you know, and. You know, I watch this match almost uh, every day. It, it plays in the gym and in, in Whitefish, and that's something else too. I posted this myself, this video on Facebook. Um, Why? So, uh, because I want people to to have a an on. Everyone want to talk about the knee bar match, and that kind of bum bum me out a little bit. It's like, yeah, okay, cool. I didn't go there to win one match with a quick knee bar, right. and and I don't want people to think that I'm something that I'm not. I want I want I want to be judged for who I actually am. I feel like they needed to see this, they, and, and I needed to see it too. And so it plays in my gym on loop um, in Whitefish. And every time I walk by the TV and this, this particular video is playing, I'll stop and watch it. Why? And um, Why? Cause, Why? Because what are you getting out of it? I'm thinking about what I could have done different. Um, you know, I didn't get submitted here, which was a, a small, a small consolation. You say small consolation, I think anyone else mm -hmm would see that as, I can't believe you didn't get tapped out by this guy. You yeah. Know, he's, a, he's a machine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th I, what, what I, what I, what I wonder is what, what would happen if he doesn't get that, that first throw, which is a risky technique, you know, could have wound up on his back. I almost got him in a triangle off of it. But what if he doesn't get the first takedown? Okay. 
how, how would that match felt or been had I got a hand in his collar and hit my ankle pick? You know, what was his bottom game like? I don't know. I didn't have an opportunity to play the sequence that I wanted. The sequence that I wanted every match this year at Worlds was get grips, fake uh, guard pull, hit my ankle pick, smashing slow pass, and win on top. I, I, I wasn't prepared. I didn't want to find myself on bottom. Um, so I wonder how things go if, if, that, if that played out rather than what had had played out. Well, have you ever... Uh, faced an opponent that you couldn't get a damn grip in like that. No, he was, um, he, like I said, right? he, 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 the good competitors, they, 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 they train a sequence. They don't go out there and wait to see what's going to happen. They don't go out there just, and say like, to no, no, absolutely okay. not. <laughs> because it was like what Adam was doing this morning in MMA practice. It's like, you don't just make up footwork. Like you you drill the same movements over and over again. And and cuz your body's going to do what you practice, you know? And and when and when they're when you're in a competition environment, your brain doesn't work as well. Like your blood is is in other places. It's on the autopilot. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I just try to memorize my my sequences and then that way I don't have to worry about what I'm going to do. I just go out there and I try to do what I've done a thousand times in the gym leading up to the tournament. So also, I don't like to compete a lot because it, it takes the fun out of jujitsu. I don't like that kind of, I don't like that kind of rolling, you know, where everything has to be a certain way and, 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 and I have to win and I have to kind of be rough with my students, you know, and um, I would rather have fun. But occasionally, I think it is good to go out there and, and just test yourself, test your jujitsu. And so let's talk about that. What, you know, what, what's your takeaway? Three matches. Well, my takeaway, my, my, my takeaway is, is, is always that, like, you always question, or at least I do, like, um, I remember when I got my brown belt, it's like, am I really a brown belt? Well, I went to Worlds twice and competed to find out, and then uh, I, when I got my black belt, first thing I did was I went and competed as a black belt, and there's all different levels of black belt, right? Sure. And most black belts don't, don't even sick. compete, you know, they don't ever compete, so the ones that do compete tend to be the better <laughs> the better black belts and um, like I said when I go to worlds or Pan Ams or big tournaments like that no no um, hobbyist show up for those tournaments those aren't like your little local tournaments and so my takeaway is I am a black belt and I'm actually a pretty decent one um, I, I, I beat a couple of other black belts that were good and I lost to one that was better than me um, but if you do the math, 40 guys enter that tournament. Uh, 20 of them lose their first match. 10 of the 20 that are left lose their second match. If I would have won that match, I would have been on the podium. You know, that was, the, that was the medal match. That was the match that decided whether or not I got into uh, the podium. And uh, so my takeaway is, you know, I'm not the best black belt at my weight in the world. Um, but it's not. If it was important, if it was important to me, I would be the best black belt in the world at my weight. But it's it's just not. It's not my focus. You know, it's not my focus. Uh, well, so yeah, clearly, if it was your focus, you would be back at it, right? Mm-hmm. I'd comp I would compete you know, a dozen times a year instead of once a year. That's right. Um, and I would, uh, I would focus on myself and not my students, and I would. Um, you know, it, it would it, it would be a much different lifestyle. All right, let's watch let's watch the kids now. Okay, cool. So, um, I, first off, how did it happen? Did you did you uh, campaign for it? Did they campaign for it? Uh, no, what <laughs> it was a Facebook thing. I, okay. I I think Heather Standing and um, and Submission Underground they they had posted some some things on Facebook to get interaction. You know, like who do you want to see or this that and the other thing and. Um, you know, Ricky and Stella are, uh, have a pretty good following in the Northwest. You know, they, they compete all the time. And they've been doing jiu-jitsu since they were four. And they're good. And they win. I mean, it felt like when they were in the same uh, weight class, because they're twins, um, when they were younger, it was always gold and silver, gold and silver. And it was just a question of which one was going to get gold that day and which one was going to get silver. Yeah, they but, told me that they, that they would just agree beforehand. Yeah. Because it was like yeah, so they, they, they're two of the best kids in the Northwest, yeah. for sure. Um, and um, 
uh, anyway, so, so somebody, you know, they started mentioning their names in the comments. And uh, then it got some traction. And a lot of people start mentioning their names. And then it's just over and over and over again. And then the 10th Planet people in Portland, of course, were mentioning Grace's name because, um, you know, she's probably the best teenage girl in the world right now. Definitely EBI-wise. Um, and um, so then um, Heather Standing reached out to me and said, hey, would, uh, are the twins interested in competing uh, for, for Submission Underground? And I, I said, I, uh, yeah, I think so. And she said, would Stella uh, fight Grace? And I was like, oof, that's a tough one, you know? Um, and so I went to Stella and I said, hey, uh, do you want a super fight against Grace at Submission Underground? Yep. And I was like, what? I mean, it was just that. It was like no hesitation. No, she didn't even think about it. Like I just said, hey, do you want to have a super fight with Grace? Submission Underground with no hesitation. And, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then, uh, so I got back to Heather Standing and I said, yeah, we'll do it. Um, I, I asked, of course, I knew what the answer was gonna be, but um, in, in both Ricky and Stella's case, because Ricky faced a, 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 one of the better wrestlers um, in, in uh, Port Portland and Gracie Baja kid. Um, Sage and uh, so I said um, hey can we do gi you know to try and balance it out well I just little. figured yeah can we do gi because uh, I know Ricky and Stella are gonna be better in the gi than in the no gi right and of course their coaches said no um, and I knew the answer was gonna be no because they don't do they don't they don't do gi right um, and I and so I of course being the person I am I replied back and said Oh, no problem. We do both gi and no gi. Did yeah. they respond to that? Uh, no, she just, just let it be. But, but it's, it, yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand. I don't understand gi sexuals, and I don't understand uh, no gi people either. Like, I just don't, that doesn't, it doesn't resonate with me. I mean, if the tournament has gi and no gi, we enter both. If it's a gi tournament, we enter the gi tournament. If it's a no gi tournament, we enter a no gi tournament. But we always do everything all the time. Why? Because it's fun. It's fun, and it all and, and, and it all has a benefit. But anyways, back to Stella and Ricky. So I knew that was going to be a little bit of a disadvantage, and um, I wasn't too worried about Ricky. Um, I was pretty confident um, that he was going to win. Um, and um, did you know the Sage? No, because and that was see that's why I wasn't too worried about Ricky. Is um, Sage isn't like Grace. Everyone knows who Grace is. I mean, I think she's like, if you go to like 10th Planet, like worldwide, I think she's listed as like top five or something of all of their athletes. She? She's like 15 as well. Um, yeah, and, and, and in that particular rule set, she's really good for that rule set. You know, she, she, she trains EBI rules. She's really good with that time limit. She's really good with that um, no points. She's really good with their overtime rules right which this was the first time Stella and Ricky had ever entered a tournament where the time limit was that long uh, and where there was overtime so this was their first experience so all of that um, combined with who Grace was is what made me nervous for Stella and what I all I kept thinking is man I hope she hasn't bitten off more than she can chew I don't want to see her get embarrassed on flow grappling I definitely don't want to see her get hurt you know anytime your kids compete you don't want to see them get hurt um, and, uh, and then to make matters worse, I was in Ireland, right? So, so I'm in Ireland and I was having a pretty tough time the three days leading up to the matches to the point where Matt, Matt, at, one, Matt at one point said, you know, you could, you could get an early flight home to Portland on, you know, and, and make it back in time. Why didn't you? Because I, um, my kids would have sensed the anxiety and the stress and I, I wouldn't have improved their chances of winning. I would have hurt them. Um, and so I knew it was better that I not be close to them because they would feel that and see it. Um, and, and Coach Gus was there with them and, and their mom was there. So they were in good hands. You know, they didn't need me. What were you worried about, man? Like the being hurt, not that... Uh, I just did, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I feel like I need to be there. Like, I, I, I don't know why I didn't give Stella enough credit because I mean she's so good but um, I just I kept having these negative thoughts where I was like she's she's gonna she's gonna get frustrated she's gonna be upset because she gets really upset like she's very competitive and she's a perfectionist and I just kept thinking she's gonna have a meltdown um, this isn't gonna be a fun experience for her 
So anyways, the day rolls around and um, we're planning the whole day around it. We, you know, we, we went out to dinner with John's parents at the, the Glenside like we always do on Sunday nights when we're in Ireland. And um, we made sure that we left in time to get back to John's house so that we could watch it. So uh, I think we started watching about oh, nervous, you, man. nervous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I was I was I was real real nervous, um, and so we watched it on um, uh, TV at John's house. I think we started watching around one. Who's who's match game first? Stella's. Still. Cool. And are you looking for? Um, we had trained. Like, we had tra you know like you know your daughter obviously and. We trained, we, uh, Stella and I and Ricky and I uh, and a bunch of the guys in the gym, we all, tr we trained for this tournament. Like we trained for the tournament for the opponents. Um, Stella and I had a strategy in mind for Grace. We knew she was going to pull guard. Um, she can't stand with Stella. I mean, Stella's well-rounded, you know. Like I said, Grace is somewhat one-dimensional in the sense that she can only do nogi. Um, she's a guard puller and she likes leg entanglements and, and, and a she's very style specific okay um, so our plan was uh, to jump through her guard we knew she was gonna sit down we were hoping for maybe a, a flying triangle flying arm bar just to get her flustered you know when you jump on somebody like that um, it's, it's non settling disconcerting sort of yeah and, and and so we trained that um, and uh, and we just Trained being being aggressive and and uh, we, we we practiced our footlocks we practiced our footlock defense and um, you know lo and behold Stella almost footlocked her which was would have been awesome. All right, so what what do you think of that? You see your boy? Yeah, we, we we I know he's got a really good footlock game. It's better than mine, and so um, you can tell he's feeling good. Yeah, he was relaxed. Uh, they they both looked really composed. I was really proud of that. Their attitude, their sportsmanship, but it's always fantastic. That's one of the things I take the most pride in is the way they carry themselves. Uh, we knew this kid was a wrestler, couldn't find anything on him, but we knew he was a wrestler um, and we had decided we were, we were just going to concede the takedown. Okay. There's no points. That's right. what I told Ricky. I'm like, you know what? Don't worry about it. The, just yeah, there's no points. You know, um, if he gets the takedown, don't worry about it because, um, you know, there, there, there's nothing to it. And, um, so a pretty good face off here. <laughs> yeah, that's I, awesome. I, I didn't remember, uh, how, how uh, serious he was, <laughs> but so he's expecting to be taken down. So he was he wasn't flustered, and that was important mentally to get prepared to accept that first okay. takedown. Lot, yeah. um, but but we knew his jujitsu was going to just be head and shoulders above, okay. right? So I think early on here he gives up the 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 takedown in order to get to uh, guard. Uh, little hand fighting. Uh, again, I, I think if he if he had hit a takedown, that would have been you know pretty monumentous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So at this point, um, he's got him up against the cage here. I like the yeah. There, kind of ankle picked him down. Immediately gets oh. swept. Immediate sweep. Um, looking for a guillotine. Now are you uh, screaming? Watching yeah. this. And then here, right here, I'm like, oh, I can't believe this kid's going to try to go for an Americana from cross sides bottom. I'm yelling at the TV, mount, mount. Like, why aren't you mounting him? You know better than to let somebody try to submit you from cross sides yeah, bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, he, he finally is like, okay. And then I'm like, oh, now I, now I start to breathe easy because, you know, and then this is it. It's over. And I knew as soon as he grabbed his foot that it was over. He was yeah. in total control, I yeah. believe. Yeah, his footlock's just that good, and uh, I knew he was going to jump on the kid's foot as soon as he had a chance. Um, he knew it was a submission-only tournament. He knew there was no points, um, so he could he could take chances, and uh, so he did. I was really happy for him, really happy for him. And, you know, there's always this thing that happens where um, Stella gets a lot of limelight, and she deserves it, um, but... You know, I sometimes feel like Ricky kind of gets the short end of the stick sometimes because he's been doing it for as long. He trains, you know, as hard. Um, and a lot of times, uh, I feel like even like at, at uh, Pan Am's this year when they competed for the first time, he kind of got gypped, like he got ripped off and, and he would have meddled. Um, and so I always kind of feel for him a little bit. So here I'm kind of happy and I would have loved to have Stella win, 
but it was kind of nice because uh, he got he got the spotlight. Got you know, he got the spotlight. Um, Long overdue. Yeah. And then right here, he's probably thinking, <laughs> yeah, which one? You know. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, that his footlock game is just it's it's really good. It's really good. Yeah. Um, we, we were under the impression that the only things that were, and I've got the Facebook messages, if, you know, to show it, but we were told, we were told that the teens, because they're teens couldn't do heel hooks, which I was all in favor of not doing heel hooks and they couldn't do, um, neck, neck cranks. Um, but we were under the impression that everything else was legal, that the only, the only difference between the teens and the, um, adults was going to be no heel hooks and no neck cranks. So we trained. Um, the bicep slicer, the arm crush, and that's why we chose the, the spider web arm bar position. Sure. Um, and then to get there and have that tank from us, I remember jumping off the couch because I told John and Matt before overtime started because I was feeling confident because that arm bar at the end, I was starting to actually feel she like Stella's. Did it like she owned it. Yeah, and I was starting to feel like, you know what, Stella might beat this girl. And so I'm getting excited at this oh, point. Nice. And um, so um, I told them. I, in fact, I got on the floor with Steve Baza and I showed them what she was going to do. And then it starts and she doesn't do it. So I'm yelling at the screen. And the first thing I said to Stella when I got home was, what the, wh oh, so what? you weren't aware of No. It. And I'm like, what happened? We what trained, we what trained this, we trained this over and over. Why didn't you do what we had trained to do? Because that's what I was saying about my match is like, we train a specific sequence and then we go out and do it. Right. And when she didn't do it, I was like, what the hell? So what were you speculating, man? I didn't know. I didn't know what happened, and and so and then so I confronted her first thing when I saw her, and her response to me was, "Dad, they wouldn't let us do bicep slicers," and, and I. They, they just told her the day of. Yeah, but we're at at the rules meeting before the match, yeah. and uh, but I was happy to see you know I'm, I was watching this and and you saw the smile on Stella's face at the end there when she shook Grace's hand, so I knew then I was like you know what she's 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 happy with herself. And you know, I'll read. I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I will. Um, I'm going to read you the uh, the messages I got from Ricky and Stella awesome. the night of, um, because they both. Well, I texted them first, of course, from from Ireland at three in the morning. Um, of course. And uh, let me see. Um, so. First, I texted on the day of, proud of you guys. Everyone here is talking about your matches today. I will be watching on Flow Grappling and cheering you on. And they were. So, like, all these Irish guys and stuff and gals were coming up to me at the seminar. There was, like, 120 people at, at, at European camp. And they're coming up to me like, hey, your kids compete tonight. And, like, everyone knows, knew about it. It's a big deal. Um, so, I, they, I was taking a lot of pride in that, too. And So, Ricky replied back, thanks, Dad. Love you. And Stella's response was, I'm strong, I'm prepared, and I'm ready to demolish Grace. Thank you for everything you do for us, Dad. I hope you're having a lot of fun in Ireland. Love you. So then, um, you know, um, that night, um, I texted her. I said, you did great, so proud. And then she texted me back, and she said, hey, Dad, I know I didn't beat Grace like I told you I would. It was a tough match, but I know I gave it my all. You've raised me and coached me that I must always try my very best and more. So I just wanted to thank you for that. It seems like a simple lesson, but for me, it's much more than that. What you have instilled in my life, it allows me to feel complete and leave it all on the mat. The point is I'm tired, yet very happy with my performance. Love you lots and can't wait for you to get home, your favorite daughter. And I said, I couldn't be prouder and couldn't ask for a better daughter. We will get her next time. And she said, oh, yes, we will. I'll keep training until I overcome my newest challenge. That's so badass. Yeah. You know what's cool, man? It's like, um, at like uh, how old is she? <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. And she's like, because of what you instilled in me, I can leave this on the mat. I'm happy with my performance. I'm proud of myself. Yep. Like, and that's then, incredible, man. Yeah. That's exceptional. And I'll tell you, let me see, <laughs> find Ricky. So, um. Uh, well, you know, and we were talking about my matches, so they weren't in Vegas with me, but here's the text I got from Ricky 
with mine. Nice, nice job, Dad. I'm super proud of you, and I thought you looked awesome out there. I know you tried your best in that third match, and it all came down to who was better on that day. Regardless, uh, you had two awesome wins and one of the slickest knee bars I've ever seen to this day. Love you, and good luck coaching the rest of this weekend. Um, so, yeah, I mean... That's what it, you get it, when you raise your kids right, man. When you yeah. nurture them, hold them responsible, push them, and love them. Yeah, know? yeah, so... Like, <laughs> so it's, it's, yeah, and if it wasn't jujitsu, it'd be something else. Yeah, but, um, you know, I'm fortunate that, that uh, two out of the four kids uh, seem to enjoy it no, as like much, if not more. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah, they're, they're, um, they're going to be the evolution, clearly, of, of SVG. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> Ella's here today, right? And, and it's like, it's so cool for me and Kane because... We were trained together before either one of us had daughters, and now our daughters are in the same division, same age, and they're just both killing it. And it's it's pretty it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, you you know, as being a father of a daughter, you know, you're always worried about you know uh, making sure your daughter isn't a victim, you know, is empowered, is you know, right. And you know, I don't have I don't worry about that so much. <laughs> no, no, I love the the interview. Uh, school they're all popular but you look at them and they're insecure mm -hmm. but i walk down the hall like <laughs> you know, don't touch me i'll throw you <laughs> yeah so it's cool man it's yeah cool. it's good to see strong people like that you know what i mean yeah especially girls so dude thank you so much i really yep. appreciate it you bet um get, back, get out to camp now yeah i think i awesome. i think i teach next <laughs>